All right, hello everybody. I want to do this uh, video on a topic that is kind of central to a lot of my life, but something I don't talk a lot about, and that is the Free State Project here in New Hampshire. So those of you who don't know, and I think most of you do, I moved to New Hampshire from Michigan seven and a half years ago now as an explicit part of the Free State Project. And other than attending some of their events, uh, some of their social gatherings in Manchester, and especially Porkfest, which I'm a big fan of, and I made lots of videos of, I'm not particularly active with most of like their political stuff and their social stuff is kind of hit or miss with me. I've got a lot of free stater friends, but most of them are people that I see, you know, at these events and I don't necessarily hang out with them on the regular. Although there are some exceptions, there are some free staters that I generally know and, and spend time with. Uh, there's been a lot in the news, though, recently about, um, if not always explicitly crediting the Free State Project, but clearly a result of it, at least in part, uh, the New Hampshire uh, state legislature and governor passed a new budget. And that budget uh, was basically, to a large extent, um, what's the word? In order to pass, they needed to placate the Free Stater arm of the legislature, the so-called Liberty Caucus or New Hampshire Liberty Alliance. And so I'm going to go ahead, now that there's not many people watching, I'm going to go ahead and post links to several of these articles. There's actually quite a few. Uh, a lot of them are mirrored and a lot of them, uh, some of them are neutral. Some of them are clearly with rosy eyed glasses, right? There's free staters and libertarians who have watched this and with a lot of zeal. And uh, those are worth reading, but always when I do, you wonder, well, are these people really spinning this in the most possible, most positive possible possible way? And so if you go and look at what the other people are saying, the people who are upset, then that can kind of, uh, it, it serves to actually enhance the argument, basically. Now, obviously, the people who disagree with the Free State Project don't like the, the power that they have and the influence they have. Maybe power is the wrong word, the influence that they have. Uh, however, by not liking it and by condemning it, they are confirming it, right? So there's a lot of things you could say about the Free State Project that aren't great, right? There's things about it that um, maybe you disagree with at some philosophical level. There's obviously arguments that can be made about what's the most efficacious. Uh, <laughs> efficacious. Uh, I'm thinking now of former Free Stater um, uh, Eric Voorhees, uh, who uh, moved to the, uh, New Hampshire, moved to Portsmouth, uh, was active in the Free State Project for a couple of years, and then he became very, very much into Bitcoin, a Bitcoin entrepreneur. And he recently did an interview with Reason, and he said that, you know, I mean, he has nothing bad to say about the Free State Project, but he, he kind of comes to the idea that, like, that's so inefficient compared to, say, uh, crypto anarchism or, uh, you know, cryptocurrency anarchism. And agree or disagree, it's it's a fair point, but even that is not to say that it's not doing anything. Um, one of the big jokes was that, it, you know, the initial idea, and for those who don't know, I'll run by it real quick. Um, the, the concept was one that's been bandied about a couple times, not just for libertarians, but for uh, any number of groups that see themselves as uh, marginal or small in number. So libertarianism, it depends how you define it and how you count it, but it's somewhere under 10% of the population, really. Now, certain libertarian ideas are more popular than that. There are certain libertarian ideas that are probably majority held. But uh, to have a sufficient basket of these ideas to be considered libertarian, you are looking at probably less than 10% of the population, and indeed probably less than five. Uh, however, as and that, of course, means that in, in the course of an election in a state with 10 million people, 5 million people, 20 million people, or in a country with 330 million people, those numbers are just not going to deliver any kind of uh, uh, influence or any kind of me measurable influence. It's just going to be completely lost. However, if those people were to concentrate their numbers, I'm going to take a, an idea from Clausewitzian strategy. If you concentrate someplace, you can become... Well, hypothetically, you could become a majority, right? If you if you were to find a place where we could get a majority of libertarians, well, I think that would obviously uh, be tremendously powerful and, and do a lot. Um, there aren't any, within the United States, within the confines of the United States, there aren't many coherent political units that that would work for. Now, obviously, there are, there are cities and towns and counties that are much smaller than that 
and the you know if, if libertarians are three percent of the population that's nine to ten million people that's that's a fair large number and there's plenty of uh, places that you could name where if they all move there they would have a lot of influence but let's be reasonable we're not going to get all of them to move and the idea was hit upon that you actually don't even need a majority if you can become a swing vote if you can become a large enough minority that one or both of the major parties have to take you into consideration you can start to act as a as a as a way that will skew things in a libertarian direction and there was a lengthy process of deciding which state um i think they had um started in like an aol chat group and it was started by a guy named jason sorens uh who was at the time a graduate student at yale um and uh he, he didn't completely originate the idea but he's the one who got this iteration going and uh the first I think it was the first thousand people and they decided they would do it when they got the first the 5,000 people who would say that uh, the idea was after 20,000 people agree to move, everybody would move to a given state. Once they had 5,000 people sign up, those 5,000 people then voted on which state from a list. Uh, and uh, there was a close, uh, close race between New Hampshire and Wyoming, which are both states that I now have a lot of connections with, and I like both states, and there's good good arguments for both. New Hampshire eventually won. A schismatic group led by William C. Royce, also known as Boston, C. Boston Tea Party, went off and did Free State Wyoming. It exists. It's very, very uh, marginal, though, uh, as far as I can tell, unless they're doing a lot of underground stuff, which not impossible, but I kind of doubt. Uh, and New Hampshire was selected. Now, that was many years ago, and it was only maybe, I think, 2016 or 2017 that they finally got 20,000 people to sign up. This so-called uh, event causes a, quote, trigger the move where people are uh, who have agreed are supposed to move. Now, many of the people did before that happened, including myself and uh, several thousand others. I think they say the numbers now are just under 5,000. Um, plus the nascent uh, libertarian population of the state, which is relatively large compared to its population. There already was. It was the live free, or die, day, live free or die state. There were a lot of very libertarian-leaning people here already. The culture, to a large extent, if not completely, obviously, is, is uh, libertarian-leaning, if not libertarian completely. And uh, we don't know how many of those people are actually going to move. They haven't all yet, and I think it's fair to assume that not all of them will. Um, some of those people probably have died or changed their minds. Some of them just will not be able to. Um, and I think that there's a lot you could criticize about that. But these recent developments are definitely showing that they have an influence. Uh, free staters have been getting elected uh, quite a bit for now for 10 years. And I'm not even sure. I think there's something like 50 or 60 legislatures, legislators uh, in the state house. Uh, and uh, they have organized politically something called the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance, which incorporates not only free staters, but also uh, like-minded people on either side of the party, mostly Republicans, but some Democrats. Uh, and the now Speaker of the House in New Hampshire, Jason Sorens, is a free stater, uh, very associated with Free Talk Live and the School Sucks podcast. So I don't know how many states can boast that they're uh, majority leader in the House is somebody who's an explicit Rothbardian anarchist, as indeed he is. So that is definitely interesting. And so this last budget uh, included a lot of, or at least several, I don't want to overstate it, several major concessions to the Libertarian uh, New Hampshire Liberty Alliance. And this is both a boon to people who agree with that, and it's also a bane to people who don't. And so I'm going to go over a couple of these articles uh, so that you all can take a look at them. I'm going to do them one by one. Uh, we're not going to read them all, uh, but uh, do, 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 do. but just these are for the, so they're going to show up in the chat. I was going to find a way to put them on the screen, but you know I have I have limited abilities when it comes to that. So let's see here. First one. So if you want to follow along or not, whatever, you could just listen to if you'd rather do that. So this first article here, a new budget sends New Hampshire a new direction, Distant Dome by Gary Reno. Um, and has lots of 
quotations of a song, but who cares? Um, so interesting, in the federal races, you know, for congressional, for, for the presidency, for the Senate, for the, for the House of Representatives, Democrats did really well. But then Republicans took, the, they reelected a governor, Chris Sununu, uh, who is not a free stater. Uh, and I think it's fair to say he's not particularly fond of free staters. Uh, or he works with them. Maybe he indulges them. I'm not sure exactly. Um, he's definitely not one, though. He's not a libertarian. He's a Republican, basically, um, just like you would expect anywhere else, like a Scott Brown type character. Um, and uh, let's see. I believe it was the only state, though, that switched to a Republican. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so according to this article, so are the majority of New Hampshire residents saying we want Democrats in Washington, but we want Republicans in the state house? Or is it something else, which I suspect it is, the writer says. Uh, uh, so he's talking about the... So we had a Democratic house for a couple of years and Sununu vetoed a couple of bills. In fact, apparently he set some kind of record, maybe a state record uh, for vetoing it, but he couldn't get anything passed. Um, let's see. Ba -ba -ba. New Hampshire has traditionally had a laissez-faire attitude, particularly on social issues. It's interesting how critics of libertarianism will selectively be laissez-faire. Uh, New Hampshire was the first state to legislatively approve gay marriage, for example, and for years fought many attempts to limit access to abortions. They often fiercely opposed attempts by politicians to insert legislative influence into the higher education system. Uh, New Hampshire has been a fiscally conservative state with a moderate approach or even libertarian in its approach to social issues. Yeah, so no income tax, no sales tax. Uh, there are other taxes. Uh, many of the major roles, uh, roads have tolls uh, and property taxes. Um, but you know, I believe the tax burden is one of the, like I think it's the lowest or the second lowest. Um, let's see. So they signed a two-year, $13.5 billion budget. It's a balanced budget. Uh, and so they, in the, in the budget, they banned the teaching of critical race theory, uh, which is always euphemistically described. They never describe it accurately. It's always just, uh, we're just teaching about the history of racism. It's like saying, uh, oh, well, we're teaching biology, but when they say biology, they mean, you know, white supremacists, whites are better, and blacks have low IQs, but they call it biology. Yeah, that's, that's about the same. Uh, so then there is a ban on 24-week abortions. Um, requires women seeking an abortion to have an ultrasound. Uh, doctors should perform abortions after 24 weeks of pregnancy could face criminal charges. That is not laissez-faire in any sense of the word. Laissez-faire is two words, but uh, I would say that banning homicide is is pretty laissez-faire. If we're gonna if we're gonna have the 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 law, uh, you can't just uh, commit crimes against people, and uh, homicide is a crime. It's, uh, so uh, so it's no longer live and let live. It's live the way I want to tell you. Yeah, it's ironic. Um, Let's see. They also are paying people to not send their kids to public schools. Anyone who doesn't want to go to public schools gets $4,000 to go wherever they want, uh, even not schooling, homeschooling, whatever. doesn't have to go to a, a pre-qualified school. There's obviously issues with that. You worry about the um, then government having more influence over uh, private schools, um, which uh, is always a problem. But if it's paying kids to leave the school system, that's really good. Um Let's see.
So yeah, this is just a kind of a basic overview of this budget. So let's go to the next article. There's so many of these. I'm just going to go really quick. Just approved budget sends state in new direction. All right, let's copy this. Was Puerto Rico you've ever considered small population? You can avoid income tax there, which is pretty huge. Pre shift move there. Um, I don't know if it was. I don't know if it was considered or not, Parisia. Um, I think the population is larger, and I don't think that it has a particularly libertarian um, culture there. Um, whatever you want to say about the taxes, um, but obviously it's not just Peter Schiff. I have friends who have moved there, so that's like a real thing. Um, but I don't know if it was considered. I kind of doubt it, but I don't know. Uh, oh wait, this is the same article, of course. Jason Osborne, blah blah blah. Oh, another thing is they insisted that the governor not have emergency powers. If he declares an emergency, I think it's like within 90 days, the legislature has to meet and they can decide whether it continues or not. We had a huge problem all over the country with governors just declaring states of emergency and then just redeclaring them over and over again and using this as a way to ramrod whatever they wanted through. Uh, so basically one of the points the Republicans, the normal Republicans in the state, they don't really care about that. Republicans aren't really against state power like that. They're not against a powerful executive as long as he's a Republican, and half the time he is, so they really don't matter. Um, and basically the uh, New Hampshire Liberty Alliance said we will not vote for a bill, even if there is a balanced budget, if it doesn't uh, restrict the power uh, of the of the governor to declare states of emergency. And... Uh, that was basically one of the main fights over the bill, and the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance got what it wanted. Um, budget also, uh, budget trailer bill also contains what has been called the most expansive voucher program in the country, allowing public tax dollars to be used for tuition to private and religious schools, homeschooling, or alternative education programs. Um, the use of public dollars for religious schools is traditionally off limits in New Hampshire until a business tax credit scholarship program was instituted several years ago. But this would take the concept of considerably further. Absolutely. If you can do it for homeschooling. Um, yeah. So let's see. Next article. So this article has some of the some of the basic history uh, titled The Successes and Failures of the Free State Project. Uh, this is by a, a former member. Do, 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 do. I don't know if he's like in what sense is he former there's a picture of a porcupine the symbol of the free state project and so this is kind of alleging rightly or wrongly that the free state project is in a uh, an extension um of ron paul's campaigns uh although i mean it obviously it predates ron paul's uh republican campaigns not his uh libertarian candidacy in 1988 but um definitely was enthused so let's see ba, ba, ba. yeah this is just a list of people moving here this doesn't have anything this doesn't have too much that's when there is police overreach or government corruption free cities are often among the first to respond as this was the case in 2016 when the police department of manchester issued a shelter in place order for the west side of the town in hopes of catching a fleeing suspect. I don't remember that, and I do live on the west side. Um, let's see. <laughs> they have pictures of protesters outside City Hall, and I, I directly recognize several of the people in the picture. Okay, like I know their names. Um, yeah, the author moved to New Hampshire for the Free State Project in February 2016 and has since withdrawn as a participant. Okay. So this one is an NPR article. Out of public eye, Jason Osborne helps 
lead historic push by GOP in New Hampshire House. So this is from the uh, and NHPR, New Hampshire Public Radio, I suppose is what that means. Let's see. So there's there's a picture here of Jason Sorens. He actually goes to my gym, so uh, infer that what you will. He's from Ohio originally, moved to New Hampshire, I think, in 2008 or 2009. I've seen him at Porkfest for many, many, many years. I know he heavily subsidized Free Talk Live for a long time. I don't know if he still does. Uh, and he's been on uh, the School Sucks podcast. So this guy is definitely a libertarian, a Rothbardian anarchist in all um, in all likelihood, maybe even explicitly. And yet he is the the majority. <laughs> he's the majority leader in in the New Hampshire State House. Uh, New Hampshire House Majority Leader Jason Osborne doesn't often take to the House floor, but when he does tends to stress a basic battle line unity among his caucus members okay sure so they say unity among the caucus members but there clearly are regular there's regular republicans and then there are the new hampshire and liberty alliance people which are helping the republic like they, they're giving them votes they're giving them money and, and activism and giving them seats um but uh they are different they, they are basically libertarians who are wearing Republican clothing, and it's kind of an open secret. Um, former New Hampshire House Speaker Bill O'Brien, an arch conservative, says oh, Osborne's eff efforts have impressed him. I think Jason is very effective. Uh, they have a, have a strong caucus on Second Amendment rights, on rights to life issues, uh, which is true. Uh, they passed constitutional carry here a couple of years ago. It already had very, very liberal laws when it came to concealed carry but they basically switched to constitutional carry they're hardly unique in that that's become like the new wave i think there's 16 or 17 states that are in that category now um let's see yeah osborne moved here to grand state from ohio 10 years ago his involvement in new hampshire politics dates back to the free state project a movement that aimed to recruit 20,000 libertarians to move to new hampshire to expand freedom and shrink government so I think it's not likely that we're going to get all 20,000 of those people. I think, however, it's already having an effect with the 5,000 who've come and more will come, you know, uh, more come every year. So that 5,000 is likely to grow to six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And if they're having this kind of effect right now, just imagine how much they're going to have then. And you can see this reporter went and looked this guy up and he can see conversations with the Libertarian videographer David Ridley. I don't know how famous he is now, but I used to watch his stuff all the time. Porkfest. Uh, ba ba So, let's see. He gave money to a PAC electing libertarian-leaning lawmakers. Uh, in New Hampshire alone, the group backed 76 candidates, and I think it says 54 of them got elected. And it notes in the article here that most of them don't have any previous government experience. They were never on school boards or anything. And it kind of lists that as like maybe they're not qualified, but obviously that's not. Um, So this is just basically acknowledging that this this guy is very effective and uh, he's not alone. That's a big part of it. They don't go into it too much in this one. <laughs> okay, so enough with the rose-colored glasses. That's that's the boring part. So this is from the Concord Monitor. Concord's the capital, capital of New Hampshire. And uh, my turn. Sununu must stop enabling white nationalism, anti-government extremism. Uh, it is concerning that Governor Chris Sununu canceled his inauguration ceremony due to concerns over armed protesters. No one should be subject to armed harassment and intimidation. Yeah, unless they're a Branch Davidian, right? Or they're, I mean, unless it's the government doing the armed harassment, then that's fine. Uh, so this is interesting. 
As Sununu seeks ways to protect himself, now would be a good time for him to also take responsibility for the ways he has fostered the growth and danger of armed threats in our state and to pledge to do better going forward for everyone's sake. Okay, there hasn't been a mass shoot any mass shootings in New Hampshire history. Zero. So this is not this is a a made up uh, problem here. It's it's an exaggerated p- problem in the United States generally, but there are mass shootings that happen not in New Hampshire. It's the lowest homicide rate in the country. It's lower than I think almost any European country. It's lower than the UK's. Not just ho- all homicide if you include everything, guns and knives. If you only include guns it goes down even more. Uh, and the other thing is the, uh, the the violence that we do have, the murders that do happen, they're not being committed by open carry activists or anything like that. So, uh, or the protesters at the state capitol, they didn't shoot anyone. So this is somebody who is just having a, uh, having a hissy fit because they see something they don't like. Um, it's interesting too. He's talking about people with guns protesting the governor, right? These are people who are angry at Sununu because of the lockdowns, right? These are gun-toting people who are angry at Sununu for the lockdowns. And then this guy is criticizing Sununu for not restricting the people who are protesting him. Uh, Some of the people protesting the governor now are the same ones who came armed to the state house hearings on the— to side with Sununu on these bills and making threatening overtures towards gun violence prevention advocates, threatening overtures, right? You're, you're talking about a law to take away their rights. So what are they supposed to do? Like, thank you, but they didn't do anything. No one got hurt. They just had a gun. I mean, if, if the, I, I would like him to specify, it would be nice. What exactly was the threatening overture? Because plenty of these gun control people, open carry is a threat. Uh, and concealed carry is a threat, and saying I own a gun is a threat. Not once has Sununu condemned these actions, supported common sense gun safety bills, or offered additional protections to gun violence survivors as they testify in the face of this intimidation. Gun violence survivors, how many of them are there in this state? Did they just interview David Hogg? And he's made the circuits around all the states. Second, Sununu has looked the other way for months as heavily armed white supremacists stood outside of Black Lives Matters events and armed militias agitating for the Second Civil War using reopen rallies to recruit and organize. I don't know it's the basis of the white supremacists for it. I guess everyone everyone who doesn't isn't a Democrat is a white supremacist. Okay. Early in May, Granite State Progress, which we'll hear more of them later, held briefings warning that growing anti-government extremism and white supremacy activity was on the rise in New Hampshire. I wonder what this could be. Our research uncovered disturbing memes by local militia members, and then it puts in quotes, domestic terrorists that discussed making command de- uh, detonators and conducting raids on public leaders. Post, uh, But as if Black Lives Matter don't talk about, you know, like blocking streets and burning things down, but okay, whatever. Uh, post up on 17 <laughs> posts celebrating a 17 year old militia member who murdered two black lives matters activists and injured a third in Wisconsin. So that's obviously a dig at Kyle Rittenhouse, who is not a militia member. wasn't then isn't now. And he killed them in self-defense. It's on trial right now. And, To just say that he murdered them, I mean, let's just say that all the black people who are killed by cops, let's just prejudicially say that they're they're guilty of some crime beforehand. Um, But again, that was in Wisconsin. Why are we, why are we, what what is that getting brought up? Like, look at all these bad things that happened in the news. Therefore, there's a problem in New Hampshire. Um, No. The alarming arrest of a group of armed men outside the Black Lives Matter rally in upstate New York, which led to the discovery of (gasps) assault-style AR rifles, thousands of rounds of ammunition, and a tactical manual type tying the group to the New England uh, Minuteman militia group. Oh, my God. They found an AR-15 rifle. This guy is just clutching his pearls too hard. Uh... So this guy's Sununu didn't say anything to do it, didn't stop these people. Yeah, but I mean, they're obviously these gun toters who you hate so much. Apparently, don't like Sununu either because they're protesting him. So I mean, pick who do you hate more the 
the go- the Republican governor who presumably does all these horrible things and these um, right wing activists, you want to call them racists, but who um, haven't done anything, but they have guns. And here we go. Take the Free State Project, which seeks to move to 20,000 libertarians to New Hampshire and take over and dismantle state government, ironically, in part by running for state and local office. That's exactly the point. Since many FSP candidates hide their affiliation, Granite State Progress regularly researches and publicizes a list of Free State Project candidates. Our organization released one report in 2017 that found that nearly half of the Free State Project candidates identified were actively promoting secession, an idea the FSP has espoused since its creation. Okay, wow. Fucking secession. The (laughs) report... The... Our, like the, the report, but it's our report. It's, you know, they say like a report, like some uh, 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 neutral third party came up with this. No, uh, New, Hampshire, New Hampshire progress is not neutral. But okay. The report sent alarm bells to the Republican establishment, the veil used by many free staters to run for office. The Republican House Speaker at the time, Sean Jasper, publicly called for the GOP to, quote, distance ourselves from the Free State Project. Well, now the now this now the majority leader is a free stater. And a fairly uh, principled one, it seems. But others hesitated as free staters have provided substantial volunteer support for Republican politi- politicians and initiatives, including some of Kristen Nunes' own pet political projects, which he doesn't list here. Um, <laughs> Sununu's history of enabling racism and extremism is lengthy, uh, but I will not. <laughs> but I, <laughs> I will not list any of it here. It's too long. The, the evidence is so overwhelming, and I don't need to actually cite any. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, 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 it's funny. So this is the good, but this is good. You know, like if we weren't, if the Free State Project, I, I shouldn't say we, pardon my collectivism, but like if the Free State Project wasn't generating articles like this, it wouldn't be doing its job. Um, Zandra Rice Hawkins is the executive director of Granite State Prodra- Progress, a multi-issue advocacy group for the last decade has tracked extremist movements in New Hampshire. Okay, short and sweet. <laughs> Annie Robbins, free staters have taken over states' legislature. Okay, so this is not this is not from a fan, and there's probably hyperbole here. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Over time, free staters have moved to New Hampshire and are carrying out their plan. Hiding in plain sight, they dressed as Republicans and gained enough New Hampshire House seats to tie the hands of Governor Kristen Nunu until he conceded a to limit emergency power orders and flip on divisive concepts. So Nunu signed the first Freedom Caucus budget, keywords, Freedom Caucus bu- budget, in a shameful hour of night with no press as Sununu, Sununu got played. An April 8th press release titled House Freedom Caucus Celebrates Budget Victory. The New Hampshire House Freedom Caucus website explains their motive. motives. One term shouts out like a warning. They don't refer to government in common Republican phrasing like limited government. They write, quote, from under the heel of government, a foreboding insight. <laughs> but this is just, wow, okay. Wait, these are the same people who think that we should teach, all we should teach about is the evils of racism in school, but we can't talk about the from the heel of the government as if the government was innocent in slavery uh the freedom caucus staters are carrying out their plan working from within the government they strive for an anarchist utopia where citizens live as they please oh my god how how are we going to stop them um how are we going to put them under the heel of government more Working from within, their goal is to bring down central and local government control. Their first ploy is inciting racial resentment in our school. Okay, so this is a this is about them getting rid of critical race theory. But critical race theory is all about inciting racial resentment in our schools and deconstructing everything except for Marxism. So it's the exact opposite of that. You can again, this is like the, this would be like mendaciously referring to. Uh, a white supremacist curriculum teaching that whites are better and they have higher IQs and they're genetically different, blah, 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 and then just calling that course biology or evolution course. Um, And the people who do that, I don't know if they just don't know what they're talking about or if they're deliberately misleading. I don't know. probably depends on the person. The original divisive concept bill, HB 544, sponsored by Representative Osborne, 
and Representative Ammon, also an ad- admitted free stater, and uh, Rep. Cordelli uh, was intended to pit neighbor against neighbor by stating a room by starting a rumor that our local schools are examples of government overreach in our lives. Well, actually, if local schools were not overreach into our lives, they wouldn't be compulsory, right? If if they were just such a great thing that obviously everyone needs and wants, then they would not make them mandatory. They're obviously overreach. They're not in the Constitution. We didn't have them for hundreds of years. And uh, their track record, now that we've tried it, right, I could see somebody in 1890 being like, well, maybe it could work here, you know, like, why not? Blah, blah, blah. Well, now we know they don't work. So, you know, we ran that test. It is an oversight. It's overreach into our lives. Pick your poison. They're either teaching, uh, you, you know, uh, patriotism and loving the flag and capitalism, or they're teaching or they're failing to teach, you know, effective racism, whatever you want. They don't do a good job. Uh, blah, blah, blah. The majority of New Hampshire Republicans chose free stater Jason Osborne as their majority leader. His extreme views are reflected in his deep involvement in the School Sucks podcast, which which aims to do away with all schools, public and private. He is succeeding here in New Hampshire. The GOP passed a budget which provides more than $4,000 per child for anyone who already has or wants to pull their child from public school. Representative Osborne is a sponsor of the initiative. The Freedom Caucus version... <laughs> The Freedom Caucus version for an anarchist utopia took a giant step forward thanks to the GOP, dominated House and Senate, and tied up Governor Sununu. Well, at least he doesn't, uh, you know, he seems to think that Sununu is trapped. I think this guy is uh, more accurate than the previous guy. The other guy seems to think or talk like uh, Sununu is is in on this. I think Sununu, Sununu doesn't really have much of a choice, and he would much prefer regular Republicans to free staters, but doesn't really have any say. Will New Hampshire become the first Freedom Caucus anarchist utopia? Your voters will help. Your votes will help determine the answer. Annie Robbins, Wakefield, uh, and apparently she is a Democrat. I was looking at the comments. Uh, apparently she is in the Democratic. Uh, she, she's from a local Democratic committee, committee member. Maybe I haven't verified that though. So, again, it, this is just confirming. Not got, there might be some hyperbole here. In fact, certainly. Um, but this is good. This is what you want to see. You know, this is a thing. It's not just, it's not just Carla Gorecki and the speeches at uh, Porkfest that say the free state is having an effect. These Democrats are very upset. The rise of the Liberty Republic from the Washington Examiner. Now, this is not explicitly about this. Uh, a lot about Ron Paul, blah, blah, blah. Governor Chris Sununu was recently caught on tape declaring libertarians aren't Republicans and suggesting this new energy should leave the party. His frustration is understandable. Uh, While most governors have enjoyed free passes from their own party over constitutionally dubious exercises of COVID-19 emergency powers, Granite State Liberty Republicans have fought Sununu for emergency power reforms, with, with some even filing impeachment orders against him and apparently carrying guns against him. I don't know. What are the? It must be hard for like a Democrat. What do they think about that? When right wing or libertarians with guns protest a Republican governor, are they supposed to be happy or sad? Um, and I think I think most of them are sad. Uh, I'm going back. I didn't do these in order. Uh, so it talks about Ron Paul, but since then, Paul's supporters have won hundreds of elections in state legislators across the country, shaping the debate on issues ranging from gun rights to school choice. Young Americans for Liberty, formerly Students for Ron Paul, counts 178 uh, legislators in 37 states as members. However, it is live free or die in New Hampshire where Paul's inspired Liberty Republicans have become the dominant force in state politics. This is so. This is a rosy. This is a rosy colored glasses ones. But 
Dominant may be too strong a word, but influentially, very obviously, as these other articles have, have made pretty clear. Nine years ago, Paul took second place in the state's first in the nation Republican primary. Since then, a gradually growing coalition of state legislature has led successful efforts, including the passage of constitutional carry. Woo-woo. Uh, in November 2020, the coalition achieved critical mass, sweeping the New Hampshire House of Representatives by winning 86 seats, nearly a quarter of the entire body. Uh, so 25% are New Hampshire Liberty Alliance people. That's a lot. Uh, Liberty Republicans became the majority of the majority and elected a former Ron Paul supporter, Representative Jason Osborne, to House Majority. I will say, though, Jason Osborne does not use the communal shower. He uses the stalls. So nobody is perfect. Blah, 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 blah. Um, so... Yet, even Sununu must recognize his recent successes are due to this new coalition. Until last November, Democrats controlled the state legislature, and Sununu could only veto their worst proposals. Pundits predicted this would continue. Thanks to an influx of new voters with the Free State Project and grassroots organizing by state and national organizations like New Hampshire became the only state in 2020 to flip its legislature from blue to red. Tough bargaining by the Liberty GOP put the most libertarian state budget in modern America on Sununu's desk. The budget abolishes everything that resembles an income tax. So there's no personal income tax, but there's other taxes that resemble an income tax and is paid for with real spending cuts. Republican leaders never delivered, even in the Tea Party era. Yeah, this is the big thing. Tax cuts are great, but Republicans are just terrible about cutting spending, but they actually did. Um, there's actually a decrease in state spending. It also includes major education reform and a year when public schools and teachers unions have denied students vital learning opportunities. Education savings accounts have become the gold standard for school choice. Uh, funding students, not systems, allow parents to end blah, 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 blah. It even enacts new anti-abortion member, including a ban on abortion after six months, except for circumstances that endanger the life of the mother, blah, blah, blah. Libertarians disagree on that, but I think it's to say it's not a libertarian argument is just wrong at this point. Enough libertarians are pro, pro-life pro and can say so with good reason. It's interesting. Libertarians make the best pro-life and the best pro-choice arguments. You know, people have started, pro-choice people have started rating Walter Block's arguments about evictionism because um, it's one of the best arguments. It's just kind of interesting. Uh some may be surprised an influx of libertarian legislators would result in New Hampshire passing major anti-abortion legislation. Unlike the Libertarian Party, which declares support for legalized abortion in its party platform, the Liberty Republican tradition is built upon Ron Paul's brand of anti-abortion libertarianism. Many libertar- Liberty Republicans have a principal belief in the inalienable rights of un- unborn just as important as to protect as those who are born. Um, additionally, the budget contained other conservative priorities, including a ban on critical race theory, teaching in public schools, and limiting progress towards emergency power reform, and limited progress towards emergency power reform. New Hampshire is experiencing the rise of the Liberty Republican. Whether that critical mass of Liberty legislators elected in New Hampshire can be duplicated in other states, that will be very, very hard in other states in the foreseeable future. Not impossible, but very, very hard in other states remains to be seen. But New Hampshire is not unique. If this bottom-up movement continues to gain control of the state legislators in 2022 and beyond, expect Liberty Republicans to play an increasingly prominent role in charting the course of the GP in the years ahead. Well, at the very least, in New Hampshire, this is a you know, this is a senior spokesman for Young Americans for Liberty. So obviously, rose-colored glasses. But you you take this with the the good, the bad. <laughs> so here is uh, building progress. Building a progressive future together. Board Broad Coalition condemns White Supremacy Pro- Protection Act in state budget. So this is from Granite State uh, Progressives. Granite State Progress. Uh, the language. So this is about the banning critical race theory. Let me let me uh, make sure I put this in the chat, guys. I will get to your com your comments. I just want to go through all these articles first. Um, Today, Republican uh, Senate Majority Leader Jeb Bradley and Senate Finance Committee voted on party lines to include the latest version of the White Supremacy Protection Act, known as (laughs) known as HB 544 into the state budget. So they, they just quote this like that's the name White Supremacy Protection Act. 
That's not the name. No one calls it like you can just. Do... <laughs> uh, okay. The language seeks to prevent conversations about systematic racism and sexism, creating more barriers to building strong, healthy, and equitable New Hampshire. <laughs> we're just, we're banning conversations. Well, I, there's more to say about what public schools can say, what a teacher for uh, first amendment. There's other articles later that I'll talk more about that, but yeah. Um, Black Lives Matter Seacoast is vehemently against this version. Uh, blah, blah, blah. So apparently though, this was so upset, like his, um, what did it say? A whole bunch of his council quit. They just quote a whole bunch of people like, let's get quotes from everyone who doesn't like this. Yeah, these guys are a hoot. These guys are a hoot. Sunu New Science two year thirteen point five billion dollar New Hampshire budget. Come on, send. Why is this not letting me send it? Oh, we're getting censored. Getting censored, guys. Shadow band. Shadow band again. Copy. Oh, it's too long. Okay, sorry. It's too long. I can't send this one. Yahoo News. Sununu signs to your $13.5 billion New Hampshire budget. That's the name of the article. Really, really nice. Uh, the, this budget doesn't just attack women's reproductive freedom. It also prevents important conversations about the history of our country and cuts funding for public schools to send money to private and for-profit schools, raising property taxes on hardworking Granite State families. It doesn't raise property taxes on anything. Uh, yeah. Controversial provision of the budget includes a massive expansion of school voucher program, a prohibition on teaching divisive concepts on race and ethnicity in public schools and limiting and limits on the governor's declaring a state of emergency. I don't see too many of them complaining about that last one. Um, although I think that, you know, they all totally agree. Um, and this one's pretty boring. Maybe check this. Maybe it's good that I couldn't send a link. So this is earlier. This is an article from before. House Freedom Caucus to Leadership. This budget is dead on arrival. That was the message from the members of the New Hampshire House Freedom Caucus who say they are prepared to vote against the state budget. Now, there, this is the state budget that is being proposed by the Republican governor, Sununu himself. You can't say you weren't, wor you weren't warned. This was a message from members of the New Hampshire House Freedom Caucus who tell New Hampshire Journal that they are prepared to vote against the state budget proposal being pushed by their fellow Republicans. And despite reports that the sticking point is the Sununu-backed family medical leave proposal, the uh, HFC says it's all about limiting the governor's unilateral emergency powers. I worked very hard to make Everyone know this was our line in the sand. Representative Andrew Prout, Republican Hudson, told New Hampshire Journal Wednesday, we didn't want anyone to be surprised. The budget process, which blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Freedom Caucus members argue executive powers issue is a top priority for many of their constituents and is essential to restoring balance between the two branches of government. They reject the current plan, which would require a vote by both chambers of the legislature to end 
an emergency declared by the governor. They want the governor to be able to declare an emergency when needed, but the emergency would end after a set period unless the legislator affirmatively voted to extend it. So basically an automatic sunset. Um, when it comes to emergency powers, this shouldn't be a Republican or Democrat issue. And when you ha- when you see the House version passed, blah, 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 blah. Establishment Republicans have quietly insisted for weeks that the Freedom Caucus members wouldn't be able to walk away from this budget, one that features tax cuts, real spending cuts, deregulation, and a 24-hour, 24-week abortion limit. This is the best budget I've ever worked on, and I've worked on a lot of them, Morse said. Morse is a regular Republican, it sounds like. Proud says it's not good enough, that putting the leg- legislature into the emergency powers process is not negotiable. If we're going to back this budget, it has to be one that doesn't allow unbridled executive power to just continue without the consent of the legislature, Prout said. It can't be the governor can do what he wants until both chambers say no. It has to be an emergency order is only extended if both parties say yes, both party bodies. In a statement from the caucus, Representative Mark Warden, uh, he is a free stater and uh, a realtor. So if you want to move to New Hampshire, get in contact with him and he can probably get you a house. When citizens, when the citizens elected us in November 2020, they expected meaningful reform to the state of emergency statutes that impacted Manchester businesses so severely, increasing the time that the executive branch has to control. Complete control of the state not only breaks the promises they were made when we ran for office, it actually harms the citizens that we work for. Are these Republicans really prepared to kill this budget? No, the legislation is better, blah, 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 blah. This is before it happened, but they did. They got what they wanted. It's twenty five percent of the legislature they needed to pass, unless the unless the Republicans start um, joining with the Democrats, which who knows? Maybe they will. Uh, okay, I don't know how. Oh, I was just looking. It says, "Police reunite family with stolen eight month old lab." Okay, sorry, uh, I was at the bottom. Without fanfare, some new new signs. Thirteen point five billion dollar. Po- Policy focus trailer bill on it. Blah blah blah. This is more of the same. More of the same. By signing this budget, Governor Sununu has shown his true colors as an anti choice, anti public education extremist. Rest assured, New Hampshire voters will spend the next 18 months holding him accountable. Activist groups on both sides of the debate also issued statements. Craig Brown, executive director of the newly launched progressive nonprofit Amplify New Hampshire, called the budget, quote, a disaster for New Hampshire families. It contains a wish list of extreme policy priorities that will set New Hampshire back. Quote, the budget shifts funding away from New Hampshire public schools through a voucher program, slashes taxes for large corporations and the wealthiest individuals, and places severe restrictions on women's rights to choose. It betrays the trust grand states staters have placed in them. We will not forget it. Gosh, he's just making you want to vote for the guy, isn't he? Um, the conservative New Hampshire House Freedom Caucus united with the Republican Majority Caucus to ensure passage of the budget and trailer bill. Osborne, was instrumental in bringing the Freedom Caucus on board after Governor Sununu and the state Senate GOP leaders agreed to work with conservative legislatures to tighten legislative authority over the governor's emergency powers in the coming months. So they could not pass it without acquiescing on that point. Blah, blah, blah. Did I, did I, did I post this one? Almost done, guys. Almost done. Best for last. Op-ed, Turning New Hampshire Public Schools into Mortuaries of Free Speech by Leonard Witt. Best for last, guys. Best for last. Gosh, could he get any closer to his face in this picture? Uh, New Hampshireites have always been free to talk about sensitive topics. No longer. Teachers and anyone doing business with the state have been given a gag order when discussing sex, gender, identity, sexual orientation, race, creed, color, marital status, family status, mental or physical disability, religion, age, or national origin. Well, 
no, this doesn't, citizens can talk about whatever they want. It's just in your capacity as a state employee or as a public employee, then no, you can't just say whatever you want. You're working on, you're on taxpayers dime. You don't get to just do whatever you want. I mean, I just don't know. And, and I mean, if there was a, if there's a pandemic of like public school teachers teaching you that abortion is wrong uh, and that whites are better than blacks and that Jim Crow was good and that, FDR was bad and that evolution is a lie. Uh, would you say that's fine? That's just free speech? Or would you say they're they're abusing their power as a teacher, right? I mean, obviously you would say that. Shut up or run the risk of being sued and fired if you don't follow the new rules passed by New Hampshire GOP dominates the legislature. The New Hampshire GOP egged on by the free state leaning Representative John Osborne, I think it's Jason Osborne, and he's not free state leaning, he's a free stater, passed a law hand delivered by Washington ideologue Russ Vaught, a DC operative whose self avowed purpose is to push the Republican leadership to the extreme right. Uh, teachers absolutely do not have a First Amendment right to teach whatever they want in their classrooms. I would say that that's true. They don't. Uh, they shouldn't exist at all, to be honest. But, um, And then he goes on. So he's talking about this Russ Vaught. But Russ Vaught isn't in the New Hampshire legislature. He didn't pass this bill. Governor, Sun Governor Sun Sununu called the initial House bill 544 anti-free speech and vowed to veto it. The bill could not pass the House and instead it was tucked into the state budget. Then after a rewrite by state uh, Senate Majority Leader uh, Jeb Bradley, Sununu's courage to fight for free speech evaporated. Whatever the Washington ideologues and free staters wanted, they got. Even when the governor's own advisory council and, and diversity and inclusion said of the Senate rewrite, quote, the enhanced penalties in this new provision threatened to censor New Hampshire police New Hampshire schools, police, and other government agencies from having important conversations about race, gender, sex, and ability. Important conversations, propaganda, Marxist lies. Governor Sununu signed the budget with the offending bill embedded in it. He could have vetoed the budget when he did not. Ten of the 17 members of his own diversity council resigned in protest. Why do they even have a diversity council? They shouldn't even exist. Um, at just about the same time, the New Hampshire GOP was passing its anti-free speech law. Free speech law. The Supreme Court uh, voted eight to one, championing the free speech rights of a of the youth. In a case of involving a high school cheerleader, Brandy Levy. Uh, okay, but that's see. These are the 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 students are being forced to go to the public school. They still have rights. They're citizens. Whatever. Uh, the employees don't, right? They, they're they there to do the job that the state says that they're there to do. They're not there to just practice their free speech. And again, you would never, like, well, how would you feel if a public school teacher started preaching the gospel to their students, right? These are the same people who will get aggravated if you have a prayer, right? But isn't that their free First Amendment right? Our representative democracy only works if we protect the, quote, marketplace of ideas. You mean protect it from ideas I don't like and then cry foul when ideas that I do like are not made uh, in the curriculum. The people of New Hampshire value free speech, but alas, the radical right in D.C. and the New Hampshire extremists have forced once moderates like Chris Sununu and Sean Bradley to turn their backs on our basic constitutional rights. Our resource, our recourse is to ensure they never again get elected to any office. Leonard Witt is a professor emeritus of communications from Kennesaw State University outside of Atlanta. Kennesaw is the town that also mandated people own guns back in the 80s or 90s. He now lives in Sandwich, New Hampshire, and is an at-large delegate of the Carroll County Democratic Committee. Ta-da. So, all right. That's it on the articles. Let me get to your comments now, guys. Sorry for all that time. Oh, fuck. I'm never going to get through all these. Duh -duh. Ba -ba -ba. I'm going to have to skim through these. Skim through these.
Arthur Rene, a libertarian takeover of New Hampshire. Maybe I should move down from Maine. I feel like Maine is going in the other direction. Afraid Maine will just become Massachusetts 2.0. So when I was collecting articles for this, I actually found several articles to that effect. Now, there are definitely libertarians in Maine. There's a lot of libertarians who go to Parkfest. There are some pretty good libertarian legislatures. But it does seem like back in the 70s, there was a, a bifurcation and Maine decided income tax. Um, uh, and maybe it's the larger sea coast, coast, the Portland, all that. You know, the sea coast in New Hampshire is pretty small. Um, the sea coast in Maine is a lot more extensive. It's basically all the population centers in Maine are, are basically located there. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Maine's a great state. I now I spend a lot of time in Maine now, actually. Um, and it's beautiful, but it is not New Hampshire. I'd love to move to New Hampshire. A bit too expensive, though. Plus, I own my own house outright here in Lewiston, Maine. Lewiston is where uh, Bates is, right? Bates University. Some guys at my gym go there. Um it's not that expensive. It depends where you live. It's not that bad. Uh, people talking about Molyneux. I haven't done a Molyneux video in forever. You know, I want to rag on a guy who's getting canceled. As much as I disagree with him, I just don't think he should be canceled like that. Um, I like this comment. Funny to see them bitching about how ineffectual the Republican mainstream has been at containing FSP because that is their job of most Republican mainstream. Yeah, that's, you know, you know, we have this tea party, all this stuff, but the, the whole purpose of, of Republicans, you know, or the conservative party in the UK is to, I don't know, misdirect or or to absorb those, all of that, and to um, redirect it in a way where it doesn't do anything. Um, What if they fear monger so hard they get people to leave to help the FSP? So much the better, Parisia. This is just perfect advertisement for the FSP. Um, it, that's funny too. Like you know, the disconnect is so strong where they'll they'll write stuff like this is gonna this is sounds so terrible and it's like it's gonna make people want to move here. My cousin just became a state rep in Vermont. Makes me think state level politics is not very competitive. So I don't know what it is. I know Ver I know New Hampshire is. Come on, focus, you fucking camera. Um, uh, New Hampshire is like the easiest state to get elected. And I, I know multiple, I know like 19 year olds and 18 year olds who are in the state house. It's not that hard. It's the largest assembly of any, of any state. And I think it's one of the largest, like the second or third largest in the world. They're not paid. Uh, and so they actually have trouble finding people to run for every, everything. Come on, focus. Maybe if I lean back. There we go. Perfect. Who are you thinking about when you talk about calling that stuff cool biology? Uh, a couple of different people came to mind. Uh, ju -ju -ju -ju. I'd love to see you making video discussion of the left libertarians who promote critical race theory and other woke BS. Uh, which ones in person? Are you talking like the DC libertarians, like the Beltway libertarians who are all up on that? I have Ibram X. Kendi's children's book. So, Luke, I, I was in the car for a couple hours the other night and I just started listening to lectures by Ibram X. Kendi. And the guy's an idiot. And he's completely contradictory. Like, it just, it's everything that they say is just self defeating. And it's funny, too, because they're like, well, what should we, what system we should we have? Oh, we should have the system like Scandinavia. So white, black people are evil. White, black 
black is beautiful, black, black, black. Oh, we should we should emulate Sweden and Norway and Denmark. Uh, Great pizza debate. In the banner of the website, they are wearing those ridiculous hats. What ridiculous hats? What's the job market like in New Hampshire? The main, it's supposed to be like the best or the second best. It's really easy to get a job here. Uh, why would you move to Maine and not New Hampshire? New Hampshire is better in every way. Um... Dan, criticism of Israel isn't free speech, Crenshaw. Oh, the guy with the eye patch. All right, I'm caught up on the comments. So if you guys comment now, I will I will comment live. But if you're gonna comment, ask about the Free State Project. That's the that's the so um I mean it was a couple of years ago that one of the Democrats from Keene said that the Free Staters were the biggest threat to the state and she just wished there was a way to ban them from entry. But there, there isn't really a way to do that. Um, and the numbers, I mean, it would be, it's kind of embarrassing that the 20,000 people haven't moved. Like a lot of people sign that commitment to go and, and haven't. They're just, you know, and maybe they have good reasons and maybe they don't. You know, I'm sure some of them can say, well, you know, my, my, my mom got sick or something. But a lot of them just didn't, you know, it just wasn't enough of a priority for them. And it's kind of embarrassing because why would you, why would you? sign a pledge that say you would do that and then not do it. But the numbers that we have apparently is, is enough to have this much influence. And if we can get 20% more people, just imagine what that'll do. Did my donation go through or did it get memory hold? When did you give a donation? Uh, yes, it did 42 minutes ago. Thank you. I didn't. I just saw it myself, Matt. Thank you. Look, like, it's like I was forty-two minutes ago. But what if I don't know enough about the Free State Project to come out? Well, that's why you ask, so you can learn more. So, like, I'm very, I'm very heartened by these negative articles. Um, Who is the guy you mentioned for real estate? His name is Mark Warden. Mark Warden. Let me. Uh, Type that here. Mark Warden. Uh, do free staters do mutual aid like job networking? Uh, yes. Um, there's quite a network. So like when I when I moved, it was incredibly easy. You know, I, I joined some of the Free State Project Facebook groups, and they have an entire one for people who want to move, and it's full of Free Staters who already own property, who are trying to rent it out, Free Staters who already have property looking for subleases. And so I moved into a house that's owned by a Free Stater, uh, and everybody who lived in the house was also a Free Stater, uh, and uh, you know I've been here ever since. And there's a big network of free staters, especially in Manchester. I think there's like 2000 just in Manchester alone. 
um, and some of them, many of them are into real estate. Like my, my landlord is systematically buying house after house after house, and there's other people who are doing that as well. Um, Mark Warden, who I, I just typed there, he I think it's called Porcupine Real Estate, something like that. Maybe that's defunct, but he's still a realtor. He was a successful realtor, I think, in Las Vegas and moved here maybe 50, 10 years ago, something like that. Um, same with Jobs. Uh, there's a lot of connections, uh, and I haven't expo- I haven't even begun to explore them. There's a lot of social connections. There's a lot of outings. There's uh, like out, there's outdoor porcupine groups that go hiking, that go camping, that go to the lakes. There's um, homeschooling groups. Uh, the Seacoast especially has a big network of homeschooling families, um, but that exists in other places as well. There's free staters who train together with guns. There's something called Gun Church where you can go and get training um, in, in firearms uh, that's pretty open. There's lunches, there's free meals, there's potlucks, uh, there's all kinds of stuff. And it's it's as much as you want to get involved. And I'll be honest, I'm not that involved with most of that stuff. When I first moved here, I did go to, there's a, a libertarian club, a free stater club in Ma- Manchester called The Quill. And I had one of my roommates uh, at the time uh, was a member there. And so I would go over with him and, you know, they'd have new movers parties every month. First, I think the first Tuesday of the month. Uh, And uh, but it was always open. Uh, They've since become more restrictive. You have to be an actual member. They won't really let you in. So unless it's a a new movers party, which, again, the first Tuesday of the month. Um. So I really don't get that involved with them. So I mostly just hang out with the libertarian friends that I already have. So like I just went to the beach with some last week. Um, the other thing too is there is a, the Free State Project economy would probably help get more moving there. There's also a lot of Free Staters who are farmers. So there's a Free Stater farm called Bardo Farms. I'm going to probably pronounce that wrong. Let me look it up. Let me look them up. Bardo Farms. Bardo Farms. Is this them? Yeah, they're selling selling cows right now. So I have bought food from them before. You can buy full full cows, full pigs, full chickens. Um, a lot of free staters work for them. So people who can't really afford to move here will go and live on their farm and work on it. Um, and uh, last year at Porkfest, they gave a lecture that I got to watch, and they were talking about how they have enough they have a large enough cattle herd that they could feed the entire Free State Project. Um, and they will definitely give priority to Free Staters uh, to the extent that that's necessary. Uh, right now, I don't think that enough Free Staters use them that they you know, can only use them, but they will give priority. Uh, when there was, um, when all the meat ran out during lockdown last year, you know, they were somebody you could call and you could get meat from them. You could go pick it up and, you know, they take your money, obviously, but... Well, I really want to move. I hate being here in New Hampshire. Then move. It's not that hard. Like there's there's a whole network. You've you'd have friends here. Like uh, people do it all the time. I had I literally now it's I know that you have a family, Luke. So obviously that's more difficult. And you probably have a house or something. But uh, I made the decision to move, and I found a place literally within one hour. And uh, had it lined up and moved, and I'm still in that same place. Um, and I haven't even begun to take advantage of all the opportunities that are there. Uh, yeah, don't live in D.C. It's horrible. There's a lot of hot guys there, but it's just horrible. Do you ever worry that increasing attention to the FSP will bring about groups like the FBI infiltrating and Opening, as we say, smear the FSB Association. Well, that's already kind of happened, you know, and there's a whole bunch of like white supremacists out there 
uh, former libertarian white supremacists who are like, well, if libertarianism was for real or whatever, then the FBI would be attacking you like they do white supremacists. But they do. I mean, if you look up the Crypto Six, just this year they raided six libertarians in New Hampshire for running cryptocurrency. And other people that they didn't raid, friends of mine, friends of mine fled the state, fled the country, right? Friends of mine who weren't indicted but, you know, were inv- engaged in crypto commerce left. And six libertarians in New Hampshire were raided and are charged with a whole series of, of, of crimes. So... Uh, they are doing that, but I just, what are they going to do that to 5,000 people spread all over an entire state where they've got 80 or 90 of, you know, a whole bunch in the state legislature. Now, granted, I'm sure there's some of us that they could find dirt on or whatever, but there's too many of us and it's too decentralized to like have one leader. It's not like, let's say that Ron Paul wasn't actually the most earnest upstanding guy who ever lived. And let's say that he was, you know, secretly a, a Satan worshiping pedophile and and the FBI knew that and they could destroy his whole campaign there isn't really like that you know as much as I was quoting Jason Osborne um, because he's the majority leader he's not the leader of the Free State Project there isn't a leader of the Free State Project you know there's a president of the Free State Project but they don't have any power they don't have any influence really so it's very difficult to do anything about it I have a house, but no family. I'm a truck driver. I should probably move to New Hampshire. There you go. Free state crypto tech companies, or is that too niche? Uh, look up the seacoast, Luke. That's where most of the tech is, and there are crypto startups on the seacoast that are free state or oriented and others that are not free state or oriented. There are crypt- several cryptocurrencies that were created. In in Portsmouth is the main city on the seacoast um, that... Uh, aren't even related to the Free State Project, but they're just, you know, New Hampshire is like the crypto capital by far. I think it's it's like there's more cryptocurrency transactions in New Hampshire than all the other states combined. It's absolutely ridiculous. Like, um, so, you know, libertarians and specifically like New Hampshire libertarians were way, way, way ahead on this. Uh, I've met, at Porkfest, who's the guy? Who's the guy who created um, Ethereum? Luke. He was on. Um, he was on. What's this called? Podcast. But you know, he created Ethereum. He's like a billionaire now. I remember him going to Porkfest. I remember uh, Roger Veer, uh, Eric Voorhees, a whole bunch of these guys. You know, some of these guys. Shrem, who got uh, arrested by the FBI and has a tether on his like, like Um, they're all there. Uh, and they're actively involved. So work from home might be more common, might help FSP a lot. Well, I think that's that's true. Uh, a lot of people are moving from the cities. You know, you have a lot of people who, have, if they work in Boston, work in New York, work in LA or Chicago, and they feel like they can't leave, and now they feel like they can, why not move? And people say it's expensive. It's Some parts of it are, some parts of it aren't. All of it is cheaper than a city, though. Like n- nothing in... You can buy a house in New Hampshire. It's going to be way cheaper than buying a house in D.C. There's like not no comparison at all um, or, or Boston. And, of course, if you want to find something cheap, you can find something cheap. Um, so if you want something more rural, there's places like Berlin. I have friends. I have uh, I have subscribers who live in Berlin. And you could buy like a house, like a, a three story house with a basement with a with with property in town for seventy thousand dollars. Now, wouldn't it be the nicest house ever? No. But Berlin is absolutely gorgeous. You have views of the presidential range, which are snow capped most of the year. There's lakes, rivers, hiking, swimming, canoeing, kayaking, camping, and the only problem in a place like Berlin is that there's not a lot of work right there. But if you can work remotely, then that doesn't matter at all. So uh, I know a lot of people who love it up there. And that's just one example. North Conway, Gorham, Lancaster, Plymouth, Lincoln. Um, there's a ton. you know. And if you want something that's really liberal, like a liberal college town, you can live in Keene. Uh, you got Concord, Nashua. Uh, so Nashua, Salem, Concord, Manchester are... are urban isk they're they're close to all the main centers like they're close to boston they're not far from new york city they're not far from massachusetts but they're still new hampshire uh and uh you know i love i love manchester so 
one of the things I'll always say about Manchester is, you know, a couple things. It's big enough that it has everything you need. There's gyms. There's lots of restaurants. There's actually plenty of restaurants. There's really good f- food here. There's lots of places you can walk. There's lots of uh, recreational activities. There's scenic parks, scenic rivers. There's a block from my house. There is a, a wooded river, the Piscataqua River, that runs, I think, like 20 miles. It's covered in forest, covered in waterfalls and rapids, even though it's right in the city limit. Um, but it's not expensive. There's not a lot of traffic. There's like no crime. Like there are homeless people, but they don't do it. Like they're very polite because they probably don't want to get shot or that's just the thing. I, I don't know. Like you see them, but they're not a problem. Um, like anything you need. But the other thing that's great about Manchester uh, is that if you want to go to the ocean, it's 45 minutes. Like you get on the highway, not a lot of traffic, boom, at the ocean, 45 minutes. And if you want to go to a different beach, you know, might go a little bit longer, an hour, hour and a half. Two hours will get you to every beach from Cape Cod all the way up to uh, like Brunswick. So like the entire New England beach complex would be at your fingertips within two hours from Manchester. Boston is 45 minutes away. Vermont, an hour away, maybe less. And if you want to go north, you can go to the Lakes region. Uh, You can go to the White Mountains, which are gorgeous and spectacular. And some of you... If you haven't looked, look at my videos. There's one titled Hiking Mount Kearsarge, and there's another one called Hiking Lafayette Circle. Just look at those. Like, they're not political videos, but just look how fucking beautiful the state is. And I can get to Mount Kearsarge. Look at the Mount Kearsarge video. That is 40 minutes from where I live. So, like, on a nice day, I can hop in my car and be hiking Mount Kearsarge in 40 minutes. Um, And there's lakes by there. It's It's amazing you can do whatever you want like and it's not like being in like in dc in dc if you wanted to get out and go hiking like your your choice like i know you can but like it's fucking hot the rivers are gross it's super populated you're gonna go on a super busy trail that everyone uses here you've got all that and then of course in the winter tons of skiing tons of snowboarding the skiing is actually pretty good the snowboarding is pretty good you have a lot of options from really nice really expensive to really dirt cheap um so like must be cool because you can probably go to Boston whenever you can go to Boston whenever you want. Uh, I go to Boston on dates. I go on Boston to meet friends. I have people come up from Boston. Uh, you know, I wanted to go to a nude beach in Vermont last weekend and a friend of mine in Boston was like, I want to go, but I don't have a car. And he took a bus up the next day and we went and like, so you can do that. I've, I've had days where I'll get up in the morning, I'll go up North and hike a mountain, maybe Mount Cardigan or Mount Lafayette Mount Musilaki, and then I'll come back, take a shower, get back in the car, go to Boston, and, you know, have fun in Boston. Um, so there's there's a lot. It's, it's, a, it's a small state, relatively speaking, uh, but it's got a big diversity of stuff. You've got beaches, you've got oceans, you've got mountains, you've got snow-capped mountains, right? There are actual alpine mountains, um, trails, freshwater, saltwater, um, there aren't any big cities. So Manchester is the biggest city. I think it's 110,000. And obviously the surrounding cities add another 30 or 40,000. But, you know, that's not huge. There's no question about that. But, you know, it's got everything that you need. And it's way cheaper than a big city. And if you really want a big city, then go to fucking Boston. And so many people do that. I One of the things I read in the articles, I, none of the ones that I linked, but some of the other ones that I read, it's like 15% of the working population in New Hampshire works in mass works in Massachusetts. So you can live here and work there. Now you're going to have to, um, you're going to have to, uh, pay more taxes. Sup length. I met you at Porkfest. Who are you? Which, which person are you? I met a lot of people at Porkfest. Thanks for saying hi, but like, tell me who you are. <laughs> you can go to Boston whenever you want. You could even go to New York city. You know, if I wanted to go to New York city, like, uh, you know, in September, they're having that Scott Horton, Bill Crystal debate, supposedly. I, that's something that I could easily do. You know, I could drive down. It's it's about four hours, but you can make it. Um, go down for the weekend. Um, go up to Maine. Go up to Acadia. You know, I've driven. To, I drive to Acadia all of three days a week now for my job. So like, uh, there's a ton that you can do, uh, and there's a big network. And I I don't even I don't even begin to take advantage of all the free stater connections that are out there. There's so many. There's so many. You know, and it's just, uh, 
they want people to move. They want people to move. They especially want families to move. So if you have, if you say we've got families in this world, well, so Luke, if you want to just join some of the Facebook groups, and if you don't like Facebook, find a way to join. Just ask your questions, and people will, will let you know. Like this is what I'm looking for. Um, there's a whole bunch of free stater stuff all over, especially especially the Merrimack Valley and the Seacoast, but really all over Grantham up north. There's a whole bunch of North Country guys up in Coas County. Um, so like, yeah, it's and it's like it's not to memify Ron Paul, but like it's happening. You know, like now I don't want to exaggerate. The the some of these leftists are being hyperbolic as is. I, like, I don't, obviously leftists can be hyperbolic and everything is racist and everything is a catastrophe, but these guys are clearly upset and Republicans are in a tricky situation. They can't, they can't have a majority. They can't win. They're not even close. The margins are, are not close. They have to have the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance on their side or else they can't win. Um, I think I saw, if you look at the population, you know, the figure of 5,000 people, it's a very small portion of the population. It's like, let me let me do the math on that. So the population of New Hampshire is about 1.3 million. So let's let's let's. I should be able to do that in my head, but uh, I'm I'm being lazy. So let's say 5,000 divided by 1300000. Okay, so. Free staters are less than 4% of the population, less than 4% of the population, and they're 25% of the legislature, 25% of the legislature. So if we could get up to 7% or 8% of the population, so we get to 10,000 people, right? We double that. We get half of the 20,000. We get 10,000. We could have 50% of the legislature, all right? That's ridiculous. So, um, and also I never fucking vote. I never give any money. Like most free staters are not even, I, I don't know, I don't know about most, but a large fraction of those 5,000 don't even have any footprint in, in politics. None. I, I don't protest. I don't vote. I don't, um, I've donated money, but it's been a long time and not very much. Um, and so that 25% of the legislature is coming from some fraction of that 5,000, a small fraction. Um, I don't know what happened to Lathian Earth or hair, but I'm, I'm into it. Roger, you can't please everybody. You know, I have some people who love it and some people who hate it. I personally find it annoying. I've just never had hair this long and I'm just seeing what it's like just as an experiment and as an experience. I personally don't like it. I guess it looks okay. But it's a little wild and it's a little hard to control. And it definitely sucks when you try to drive down the road with your windows open because it just gets all in your face. Um, it's at that point now where it's long, like long enough that it's in the way, but it's not quite long enough that I can like pull it back very well. It's always been a little moppy. It's been... I got it cut for my grandma's 100th birthday in August last year, so it's been 11 months. It'll be 12 months next month. Are New Hampshire people worried about Massachusetts migration? Yes, they are, but that has been a perennial thing. Um, people have been fleeing Massachusetts for tax reasons since at least the 60s. There's also been many, many migrations from uh, Quebec, actually, and something like 25% of the population are, are descended from Quebecois for that reason. The thing is, the people who are moving from uh, from Mass are selecting to move from Mass because they want to pay less taxes. So it makes me a little nervous, but they're not having like the impact. Now, one of the one of the problems was a lot of Massachusetts students were going to college here, and so you'd get four or five thousand voters, maybe even more, between University of New Hampshire, Southern New Hampshire University, St. Anselm College, uh, and a few others, Dartmouth who are, you know, overwhelmingly liberal and they're voting in this state, even though they don't live here and they're probably never going to live here. And so that's one of the things Sununu tried to, and I don't know if they succeeded in doing that, but you can't just be a student in the state to do that. Um, that's a, that's a more direct problem. 
the people who are moving here, they're moving here because they don't want to pay higher tax. Like if you left Massachusetts because you don't like paying an income tax, then why would you support an income tax here? And, you know, the other thing is, yes, Massachusetts is a, is a Democrat state, but there are actually a lot of Republicans and conservative people in Massachusetts a lot. And those are probably the ones who are moving, right? The people in Boston or uh, uh, in Worcester or wherever else who are, are big liberals they're not the ones moving uh, d- 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 luscious as fuck thanks it is i get a lot of compliments and then i also like so people who don't know me like compliment me uh people who do know me are like what the fuck is wrong with you um they have hair bands i don't like the way those look but i might have to start examining them yes but if you look at Cal- texas it's it is the californians that are keeping it red and the kids of GOPers in texas trying to turn it blue there's an actual ideological sorting take place university students are the absolute worst yeah uh and I don't know, though, because Massachusetts has so many universities that I don't know if the net. I don't know if more students are leaving New Hampshire to go to school versus how many are coming to New Hampshire to go to school. There's a couple big colleges, but they're not huge. So University of New Hampshire is the largest in terms of having a campus. And that's, I think, around 12,000 students. Southern New Hampshire University, they have a huge online footprint. I know some of the SNU people, and they're 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 straight up communists. I mean, I've I've met some through through Grinder that you know guys that I know, friends, guys that I've hypnotized, guys that I've enslaved. But also, um, I know them like in my jujitsu class, and like the SNU people are just abysmal <laughs> critical race theory like communists. But that campus only has four thousand students, uh, and they didn't even have campus this year. They decided to do all virtual. But even when they don't, it's only four thousand. Schools like St. Anselm, I think, is like one and a half thousand. Dartmouth is like four thousand. So they're not big. They're not like the land grant colleges of the Midwest, like Ohio State or Michigan State or Illinois, University of Illinois. Those are those are astronomically huger schools than anything that you'll find here. So I don't know what the net is because if you look at like Boston, Boston has like twenty five colleges. I don't think there's twenty five in the whole state. Um, I think data shows that it was the state university system that flipped California blue. And it's also not just the students, right? It's all the faculty. Like what was the last article I read, you know, wrote, read there was by a, a progressive, you know, a teacher. You have all this faculty that's just there and they have easy jobs and they don't have, they have perfect job security. So then what do they do with their free time is they become politically active and they can become the democratic, you know, council member at, lar- at large or whatever. And then in the meantime, try and brainwash as many kids as they can don't always succeed but you know they give it their level best um mm, i still don't see He never told me who he was. Thanks, Wama. My curiosity. Oh shit. Um. Migration to Florida is over two to one GOP, even from New York City, but with exceptions. My mother-in-law, depending on the state. Yeah, I think there's definitely sorting. Like, I, there's been a ton of people moving to Texas. All these, I mean, there's Joe Rogan and Michael Malice and, and Freeman. Not, not that Rogan and Freeman are libertarians, but, like, I know Malice is taking, like, a whole bunch of these. I mean, there's a big libertarian community in New York City. There's a lot of anarcho-capitalists in New York City, a lot of them who made YouTube channels even back in the day, a lot. And I think they're all leaving. And they're all like, fuck this city. It's just, and I, you know, I always was amazed. That, and I get it. You grow up in Brook in Brooklyn or the Bronx or Manhattan, and like you just can't imagine not living there. Michael Malice had a great point 
on one of his recent interviews, he said, you know, New Yorkers are among the most provincial people. Like they live in New York and they're so New York centric that most of them have really no clue what anywhere else is like. And, you know, I'll be the first to admit that if I go to New York City, it's fish out of water for me. You know, I have been there several times. I've spent time there. So I, you know, I have that experience, but I, I wouldn't pretend like I'm a um, somebody who's lived there for a long time and really knows the city. I don't. But I can tell you, I know a lot more about New York City than people from New York City know about Manchester or the hometown where I grew up or any number one, any number of 100 other cities that I've spent time in and they never have. Um, so it's difficult. And I see the allure because there's so much food and so much culture going on. But like it costs so much and the politics is so deadly and the culture overwhelmingly is so detrimental but you've got people like Rothbard and Ayn Rand and all these people who fetishize the city and, and they, they have a hard time leaving. But like, uh, let's see. Um, in Georgia, the Californians have pressured local government to ban smoking in bars and have directly interfered with our local elections to get their political past. Hmm. Texas Tribune polled California expats two to one conservative. Have you heard of Prospera in Honduras similar to FSP? Con yeah, I have. And actually at Porkfest this year, Jason Sorens gave a lecture and people asked about that. And he said, you know, not to quote Mao, let a million flower, let a thousand flowers bloom. The problem is they're trying to build this in a place that has no infrastructure, that has no cities. There's nothing. You're basically starting from scratch. And so you need billions and billions and billions of dollars to even, you know, get a road and a whatever. Right. So um, here it's already there. So you're just kind of appropriating what's already there. This is what this is what's making the leftists here so angry. Like we're just ta it's like a, a virus taking over a host. We're, it's already here. We're just moving in and becoming part of it and influencing it. So uh, also, just me personally, I don't like heat and humidity. It's it's hot enough here, uh, so I could never do Honduras. But I wish them all the luck. I mean, I seasteading, sea setting, free land, all these things. I, you know, I want them to try. I want them to succeed. You have to be careful. A lot of these, some not a lot, but many of these turn out to be scams. So like if, if you remember... Galt's Gulch down in Chile from I think that was related to Jeff Berwick a complete scam like 100% like a Ponzi scheme but like they're not all like that um, but I feel like that's difficult and it would also be difficult like one of the things one of the reasons Wyoming wasn't chosen and like look Wyoming's beautiful I love Wyoming I've spent a lot of time there I have a lot of friends there it's a tremendous state in a lot of ways and its culture is tremendous in a lot of ways but it's super rural and it's super dependent like i just read a, a book on this recently when it talked about the different nationalities of the united states we've got yankeedom the deep south tidewater you know the the french canadians uh, uh el norte um the west coast or the left coast um and the interior west you've got this interior west that's like the rural areas of like wyoming montana idaho uh colorado new mexico arizona the what the eastern halves or eastern two-thirds of washington and oregon right and the thing is these areas are really arid and really really like difficult to live in in fact you can't really i mean there's obviously pockets there's areas there's a little oases of fertility in some of the mountain areas and it's not just fertility like you're like why well, don't want to be a farmer why do you need fertility like it's in many of these places like you're not going to be able to have water like there, you will not be able to have there is not enough water for you, 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 your house cannot build a well deep enough that's reliable enough that you can have water. Uh, you need much more capital investment. And so the interior West was kind of settled by a combination uh, initially and to, and from, and still to a large extent on, on corporate investment, big corporations, railroads, mining companies, oil companies, um, going and laying down massive capital to build a, a mining town or something like that. And then later in the 20th century, the federal government, you know, whether it's building a dam or a military base or whatnot. And so 
it's an interesting dichotomy where like they want to be left alone and they want to be free and enjoy their open spaces, but they need, they really need outside investment for it to be a place that people want to live. I don't know if uh, Utah might be the exception here. I'm not sure the book didn't even talk about the Mormons and I think that they're their own little category, but um, so I think Georgia would have a similar problem, not Georgia, Honduras would have a similar problem. You're going to need a, a huge amount of investment. And unless you can crowdsource billions of dollars, you might get it. Maybe Peter Thiel or, or somebody else will, but then all of a sudden you become beholden to them in a way that is tricky, right? Because there could be an alignment problem between what they want and what everybody else wants. Whereas if you have something where there's thousands of people and you know, sure, there's some Bitcoin barons here and there, but they don't control the narrative and you don't have to really worry about an alignment issue when it's decentralized like that. Um, what, what's the New Hampshire circumcision rate? Are free staters opposed to it? So, uh, I have to say that, um, definitely the circumcision rate is lower in Vermont and Maine than it is in New Hampshire. There are way more foreskins in Maine and Vermont, Maine, especially, and also Vermont than there are in New Hampshire. I will say that at least among the guys old enough to be on Grinder, circumcision is, you know, overwhelmingly common. There are it is less common among the twenty minus cohort, so you, there are definitely uncircumcised, you know, teenagers in New Hampshire right now. But uh, New Hampshire is losing to Maine and Vermont, and really even to Mass because of all the immigrant populations. So I don't know what it is today. It's not very good. What they should have done in the bill uh, is banned infant circumcision or not included in Medicaid like they've done in other states. That would be, if they haven't already done that here, I'll have to look. Um, so, uh, and in terms of free staters on circumcision, I would say that they're pretty receptive, but not universally. When I've gone to Porkfest, the reaction is overwhelming, is, is mostly positive. There are some people who disagree. Obviously, there's a lot of libertarians who are Jewish, and uh, some of them are anti-circumcision Jews because that's a thing, and they're overrepresented in libertarian circles, but some of them are not. I remember one guy in particular who I see every year, he saw my shirt, and he was just like, Rothbard said that we're allowed to have one exception, and that's my one exception. So his point of view was, if he was only going to make one rights violation, one, he could make one rights violation. It wouldn't be, you know, to save, uh, have a welfare program for poor people. It wouldn't be for free education. It wouldn't be for military. It wouldn't be for law. It wouldn't be for environmentalism. It wouldn't, it would be to cut baby dick. <laughs> okay. So like that's where his priorities were, but I don't, I don't think, um, now on the other hand, there are some countervailing forces within the Liberty movement that are, so, you know, a lot of them are going to say religious freedom, you know, but then the debate becomes, should that include your, your right to mutilate your, or at least surgically alter, if you don't want to load the term, your child's genitals, right? You're Jewish, so you can make your son Jewish. The other thing too is parental authority. So a lot of libertarians are very sensitive to the idea that they don't want to be told what to do with their kids, which I completely appreciate. And they look at it like, well, if we if we allow this, the next thing you know, they're going to tell us that we have to go to public schools and teach critical race theory. But I would say that it is different in principle. You're talking about a rights violation to do that. And these same people who would argue that would never argue that they as parents have the right to say sever an earlobe from their child, slit his nose, um, bind their feet you know, scarify their face, right? They would never, there's no other body part that they would allow to be cut off. But the culture normalization of circumcision is so ingrained that even for some libertarians, they don't see it right away. But I would say a large, a large group, a majority probably are against it in principle, but you know, we'll see. Uh, I'm from New York City. I hate it there now. And you're in D.C. Leave D.C. and come to New Hampshire. Um, weird question, but would you be open to a Q&A style interview written or otherwise? Would love to pick your brain on some specific questions, liberty related and otherwise. I don't know, Matthew Paul, do you have like a fucking YouTube channel where you can post it? <laughs> or is it just for your private, you know, gratification? 
Um, Yeah, Florida is much too hot. My brother lives in Tampa. I've been there obviously a couple times and I, I could never live there. It's too hot. But I've not and I've never been to Miami. But it looks like there's lots of nice beaches. I have a friend who's just at a nude beach there. The bugs in Florida are scary. The bugs, the pythons, the cobras, the alligators, the American crocodiles, the fire ants, the killer bees, the lizards, uh everything it's just a horrible place <laughs> the humidity this the, the the hurricanes right the manatees god damn it um the sharks no i guess we should sharks here too though there's somebody last year got eaten by a great white shark off the coast of maine which is quite the hot topic so all right guys so we've got an hour and 45 minutes so let's do the last call on questions. If you've got anything else you want to ask, uh, most especially about the Free State Project or New Hampshire in general, shoot the shot. We'll give us a couple of minutes for you guys to hear me say that and to think about and or type a question. But it is getting late, one thirty here, so I want to get to bed before too long. Florida is too hot, too humid. I don't know. It's just not meant for life. Not for human life. I My brother got married there, and we had to wear tuxedos outside, and it was awful. In July, I think. Thanks, Luce. Nice, nice talking to you, Luke. Let me know when you decide to leave your horrible city and come up here. Off talk, have you read Secret Don't Tell by Carla Emery, book on hypnosis worth reading? So somebody else recommended it, Spider. I looked it up, and it's like $2,000 on Amazon, so I have not read it. Matthew Paul. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm open to do that. Let me look at your channel and see what you have. Do you feel like the FSP is worth it for personal reasons or do you need the political motivation also? Well, me personally, I like the state enough that I think I'd be happy moving here, even if the Free State Project, you know, like let's say something happened and tomorrow the Free State Project said we're canceled, it's not happening anymore, which is, is actually like ridiculously unlikely to happen. But let's say that it did. Uh, I think I'd still want to live here. So because um, I, I do genuinely like it here and I, I'm not very active in the Free State Project, to be honest, like I've, as I've said a couple of times, I've never voted. I've only donated a handful of times and a small amount of money. I don't do too much of the socializing. Yes, I do pork fest and I have a few friends. Um, every time I go to pork fest, I walk away thinking, oh, I want to get more active and I, I just never really do. Um, but it, uh, yeah, so it was definitely worth it for me, even if the Free State Project ends up to be a total bust. But kind of the the gist of this video is that seems very unlikely. Like the, the movement that's generating these results is not going to fade, you know, next year or at the midterms or with the next presidential election. It's, it's got legs, as as David Friedman would always point out, and you know, I've heard him say this a couple of times, having gone to Parkus. You know, he's been doing the libertarian circuit since the '70s, and he's like, this is the one event where a, there's a equal ratio of men and women, and b, there's families. So like, there's a staying power here that every other idea out there, you know, the city in Honduras, free land, you know, these other ideas, unless they have families, they really don't, they don't really have legs, right? They're not going to really last, or it's unlikely that they will, right? Uh, you know, if it's just a college movement of intellectuals who are into Ron Paul, like that's going to fade when they graduate or they get jobs, um, or that's going to disperse. So if people coming here and setting down roots 
a relatively small number can have a big impact if they're active, and they are. Thanks, Parisia. Nice talking with you. Maybe one day I'll leave Maine. I mean, Maine looks beautiful, but New Hampshire's better. All right, guys. Well, I want to thank everybody for watching and uh, live free or die. <laughs>